Hello, my name is Richard Betridge. I am a third year diagnostic radiography and imaging student at the University of Hertfordshire. I'm going to be using this video to talk a little bit about my elective placement which I undertook in Tanzania in August of this year, 2013. I undertook this placement as the recipient of the Society and College of Radiographers Work the World Competition 2012 which is an annual competition run by the society which enables two lucky students to go and undertake an international elective experience in conjunction with a company known as Work the World. This is a competition is ringing again in 2013 which will allow two lucky students in either diagnostic or therapeutic radiography to go and undertake a placement in 2014. Just to talk a little bit about Work the World, they are a commercial company which offer healthcare and medical electives for both students and qualified professionals. Uh, this is in medicine, nursing, midwifery, dentistry, radiography, physio, just to name a few. And uh, they offer these experiences in Africa, Tanzania, Guyana, in uh, South America, in Argentina, uh, and in Asia, in the Philippines, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. The entry to the competition requires the applicant to write a 800 word personal statement. There's just an example of some of what I wrote there. This essay asks for the applicant to write a little bit about what qualities they have and what interests they have um, in going to undertake this elective. I would thoroughly encourage any radiographers that are interested in going to do uh, an international elective to take part in this competition um, because it's, uh, it's a really a trip of a lifetime. Just to talk a little bit about Tanzania um, in comparison to the UK, just to give some perspective. Tanzania has around 44.8 million people who only 26% of them live in urban areas compared to 62 million and 80% of those living in urban areas in the United Kingdom. This obviously presents some issues uh, in terms of healthcare, in terms of access to healthcare facilities um, and certainly in lots of smaller villages in Tanzania it tends to be more of a quote-unquote witch doctor who will um, be the first line of treatment for many people um, and obviously that has its limitations. Another issue is in terms of the GDP per capita is only 1,440 US dollars per person in Tanzania compared to 35,840 US dollars in the United Kingdom. And certainly in Tanzania there was a form of public health care but it's still required for people to pay for, for that health care. I'll go into a little bit more detail about some of those costs in terms of radiology uh, a little bit further in the presentation. Just to look at some more healthcare related statistics, the lav average life expectancy is quite dramatically lower in Tanzania compared to the UK, roughly around about a 25 year difference for both men and women. And there's a little bit more of a disparity, there's a, a five, year, um, five year disparity between men and women compared to a four in the UK, which isn't a dramatic difference, but it is a difference nonetheless. Other issues there that present themselves a much higher under five mortality rate, 76 um, per 1,000 live births. Um, an issue that was quite prevalent in children, in young children, is um, malaria, which is obviously a, a big issue uh, right across um, the developing tropical world. And certainly that is something that you do notice and is a big issue. Um, but it's an issue that's being dealt with by a public health level, both by national and international government in Tanzania. You certainly see programs which are being run by the United Nations and in turn the World Health Organization to try and combat the, the problem of, of malaria. Further issues is a very high adult uh, mortality rate, or adult as defined by the World, World Health Organization is there. Uh, 15 to 60 years. So that's 385 per 1,000 of the population. Um, but obviously when you have a average life expectancy of either 53 or 58, respectively for men, men and women, then that's not that surprising that that statistic is so high. Another sad um, statistic is the maternal mortality rate, which is uh, 460 per 100,000 live births compared to just 12 in the United Kingdom. I was living whilst I was in Tanzania with some student midwives who were undertaking placement in a, in a different hospital to me, but were, having a, were working on the maternity wards there. 
and they were telling some very sad stories of uh, of what was happening um, on the maternity wards, sadly to report some poor treatment of uh, of the women who were in labour. And then, of course, there's the infectious diseases like HIV and tuberculosis, which are much higher and uh, a much bigger problem in the in the developing world than they are in in the Western world. And this is also just to give a little bit of perspective in terms of the size of the country. I mean, that's an outline there of Tanzania, and it completely engulfs both the UK and Ireland. It's um, quite, it really demonstrates how big of a country it actually is. And to give even further perspective of that, it's just the, the full size of Africa there. I mean, you've got Spain, France, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, United States, Italy, Switzerland, Eastern Europe, India, China, Japan, and the United Kingdom completely engulfed to the complete size of Africa. That's an image that I found on the internet. I found it very interesting to share. But now to talk about my actual experience itself. Um, I started out my journey from home, my home back on the Isle of Man. Um, I then flew on to London, where I flew from London Heathrow out to Qatar, to Doha in Qatar, and from there on to Dar es Salaam. I don't have that much experience with travelling long distance, so it was quite exciting to do that for the first time by myself. And um, yeah, it was all part of the adventure, I suppose. Just a picture there of me flying into Dar es Salaam. Uh, it really gives a really good perspective of sort of the vast sort of expanse of the city and the way in which it's built up. I mean, this is a city where so many people live without running water, they live without um, electricity, and that's some of the issues actually that were brought up. Um, I was reading a news article concerning um, Barack Obama's recent visit to Tanzania, and actually the United States aid agency has just invested more money to get some more power stations up and running in the country. But to talk specifically now about my experience um, doing the hospital placement, I was based um, at the Mulimbili uh, National Hospital and Mulimbili Orthopaedic Institute. Uh, this are, these are two separate institutions but on the same, in the same complex. They used to be one hospital but for political reasons uh, they were separated to separate the resources um, to ring fence the resources for specific things. So the National Hospital was the main referral hospital for pretty much the entire country, um, which was really good because it had a real range of modalities. So I was working in conventional x-ray, interventionals, uh, CT, MRI, ultrasound. Um, so really what you would expect to see in, in a normal hospital in the UK. The big difference for me um, with this hospital was I've never really worked in a massive referral hospital before, not even in the United Kingdom. I work in a quite a small, more sort of mid-sized uh, district general hospital. So this is something having to come to this vast complex of buildings that were connected by these um, covered walkways, external walkways, as uh, demonstrated in this picture here. I was also working um, at the Moon and Billy Orthopaedic Institute, which is the main orthopaedic neuro and trauma hospital for the city of Dar es Salaam, um, which <laughs> had some, I certainly saw some really interesting things there. The journey to and from the hospital every day was uh, quite an experience in itself. We either took a, a bajaj, which is the local name for um, a tuk-tuk, so it was quite interesting trying to fit as many people as you possibly could in the back of one of these. I think one time we managed to get four or five, which had one person sat next to the driver. Like, <laughs> I'm sure if my uh, if my mum had seen, uh, <laughs> she would have been quite uh, quite quite um, yeah worried <laughs> to say the least. All the alternative was taking one of these um, dollar dollars, which are the city buses where you would quite often uh, be, if you were lucky enough to get a seat, you'd end up with somebody either sat on your lap or you'd end up with uh, somebody with right up in your face or uh, if you had to stand, then you were like crushed in like a sardine. It was, it was quite a unique experience. I've never experienced anything quite like that before. Not even on a, on a night bus in London where you, have, where you have to stand. So the National Hospital was still using um, film, plain film, uh, which is something I've never really used before apart from doing a little bit of dental work. So they still had dark room and everything like that as per normal. So that was, that was an interesting experience. And here is the viewing area. Um, I think I can't remember that, that, that radiographer's name. He was a student. He was very careful to pose for that picture to make sure that he, uh, he looked, had his best side. <laughs> So to talk a little bit specifically um, about plain film and my experiences with that over there, uh, most of my plain film experience was actually in the Orthopaedic Institute. 
Uh, the Orthopaedic Institute was quite um, strange because it was the main trauma hospital for the city, yet there was no CT or MRI. Um, I think, I believe that there is a development being undertaken to build a new ward block, which will include CT and MRI. But when you have, a, say, if there was a big head trauma coming in, then quite often you'd be doing a plain film view in the x-ray department. Quite often the patients would come down, there'd be quite a lot of um, blood, to be honest, um, and it required a lot of tidying up, washing up, cleaning. Um, it was uh, quite a, a difficult thing to to deal with, to comprehend, because I'm not really used to uh, working within those sort of more trauma situations. The strange thing about that x-ray room was the fact that you didn't take the image inside the room. You had to go into a separate viewing area, which was covered by the glass there, um, to do the x-ray. But that always meant that the lights in the room always turned down so that you could see the collimation because the collimation wasn't brilliant on that machine. And quite often you couldn't actually see the patient when you did the x-ray. And then when you were doing things like chest x-rays, then it was very difficult to then call out to tell them to breathe in and hold their breath. So quite often it would be a case that they would tell them to breathe in and then they would go back into the viewing area, quickly press the button and then run back out again. Um, certainly wasn't the most um, preferable of situations. Just uh, to show there, that's cleaning, like the cleaning area, the sink. They did, uh, in that hospital, they did actually have a uh, hand gel. It's not really nice. It was quite very, uh, very pepperminty. Um, but I quite often didn't, quite often these dispensers weren't actually full. To talk a little bit about the ultrasound in Tanzania, um, quite interestingly, obviously, um, in, our, in, in the United Kingdom, we have a, a continuing role expansion for radiographers, quite often taking up roles that were traditionally undertaken by radiologists because there is a lack of resources, lack of staff, and that seems to be something that's to be being embraced in Tanzania also, but even to a broader extent. So the radiography uh, education program in Tanzania is a, a three-year uh, diploma, um, which is spent sort of silly to us, part of your time doing academic learning and part of your time doing placements. They're often quite often students will go in to work um, at work on the placement even when they're actually in, in university. Because the Muli Billy Hospital is on the same site as the main uh, teaching school for radiography in um, Dar es Salaam, which is the university. But actually the, the radiographers newly qualified are expected to be able to undertake basic ultrasound scans. So that's, you know, abdomens, uh, for example, um, I think maternal scans perhaps as well. I mean, there are some more specialist sonographers who do a lot of the teaching, but yeah, they are uh, quite often uh, newly qualified members of the staff and students undertaking some of the scans. So I got a, got a chance to get hands on with an ultrasound probe. Um, which was quite interesting. I'm having to really rack my memory back to what I'd been taught on my uh, on my clinical back in the United Kingdom. The superintendent sonographer that let me have let me have a go at doing some scanning back in the UK, um, having a, like a go with the probe. Free really having to rack my memory back, but uh, I was quite proud of myself. I managed to find uh, find the kidneys and uh, and also the bladder and such things um, without too much difficulty. Um, Certainly, uh, there was. I wasn't doing any uh, diagnosing from these scans. But the equipment, though, was something that uh, was uh, to be less than to be desired for, perhaps. Um, that little portable machine there was being used by one of the consultants to do a, a paediatric list. So they were using that tiny little screen with very little control and then printing off the images. They did have a slightly larger machine there, which um, the, certainly is quite quite older equipment. Whilst I was there um, a few weeks in, when I had gone to the ultrasound department for a few weeks, they did actually take delivery of a, a new Doppler machine which had been donated. Um, and one of the people living in the house was actually a, a sonographer from, from Australia. And uh, she actually helped to do some sort of training sessions uh, with them to get them um, to get them up to, up to scratch with uh, knowing what they're doing with that equipment. And I think it really highlights uh, it's quite easy to throw resources um, and equipment um, at sort of the problems that they're facing. But without the training and knowledge to go with that, what they actually get out of having for that equipment is less than to be desired for. And I think that's something I really noticed that actually throwing money at a problem uh, isn't necessarily always the right answer. And helping to develop better knowledge certainly would be the more helpful and more valuable thing that we can give um, in these situations. 
But to move on, um, we've talked a little bit about the CT scanner. This was in the um, Moulinbilly National Hospital. Uh, it was a 16 slice scanner. They were doing a real range of examinations and uh, they had to work at a really quick pace because that was the only scanner in the entire hospital. So quite often you would have two patients being brought into the room at the same time with getting one of the patients to change whilst perhaps you do a head scan and then then bringing the patient that's changing in to then quickly do the uh, to do the body scan they have uh, only quite a few radiographers that are actually trained to work in ct there i think they treat it as quite a, a specialist modality which is quite crazy when you consider that they will let more radiographers hit use the ultrasound which is extremely specialist but less radiographers go and use the CT scanners. That was just an example there of the prep area for injecting. Contrast was injected um, by hand. They didn't have a, a, a contrast pump. So normally it required a couple of syringes to get to get in. Um, but they did use a cannula. <laughs> and that is just that there is um, the wall. I think they've been playing a game where they've been shooting uh, contrast up the wall to see how high they can get it. Um, but it looked a bit gross to be honest. Uh, this is just an appropriate moment to talk a little bit about um, the costs that uh, are involved. It's one that really stuck in my mind. Um, that there is a, a poster um, next to actually a bank teller window where patients would, would go to go and pay for their for their examinations. So for example, uh, as a public patient, a CT scan would cost 50,000 shilling, which is only rough 20, about, roughly around 20 pounds for that. But to put that into some context, 87.87% .87 of the population actually live on less than two dollars a day which roughly works out about less than one pound 25 a day quite a few of the patients would use their savings to pay for, for having a, an examination done an mri would cost around 40 pounds so it tended to only be either insurance patients um, who had private insurance or wealthier patients who um, were able to afford to to have those scans it seems this was uh, the interventional room. I spent quite a little bit of time here um, because it was quite interesting uh, to see a lot of different types of examinations which aren't so common in the UK anymore. Lots of sort of the bariums and um, some of the uh, IV stuff that we don't need more, like IVUs. Uh, they did actually have a specific room just for IVU examinations, which is quite crazy considering the fact that um, I'm so used to only ever seeing IVUs done by CT now. Um, it's really interesting. I, I had one of my most difficult experiences there where I saw uh, a patient um, aspirating uh, a lot of barium due to a fistula. I want to be careful how I talk about it, obviously, but um, it was quite difficult when you consider the fact that the patient, um, the, there was a lot of people, a lot of members of staff in the room whilst that was happening. And the delay in the time that it took for the people in the room to react and the assistance to make sure to get the perfect image before getting taking care of the patient was quite difficult to comprehend. And I wasn't really in a position to act in that situation. So I ended up feeling somewhat helpless whilst I saw this person suffering quite badly. Um, thankfully, they, they managed to get him to sit up in time to um, they got him sat up in time to, you know, to, to, so that he would stop choking on the bearing. But um, I don't know. It was, it was a difficult thing to, to, to deal with. Uh, there's just an example of the preparation area for bearing there. The, the tap wasn't working. Um, and the toilet that they, after a bearing the enema, was literally a, a hole in the ground sort of solution, squatting toilet. Uh, though I've chosen not to include a picture of that. To move on to MRI, um, I thought the MRI scanner was quite impressive. When I first arrived, it was actually was broken. It had been out of function for a few weeks just because they have to wait for somebody to come into the country to uh, fix it. Most of the equipment there, just to point out, is actually Philips. Um, but yeah, the MRI scanner was a um, quite small one, um, but it could almost uh, look like uh, something that was in a, in a hospital in the UK there. As I said before, that it tends to be um, patients that can afford it that, that get an MRI scan. I have to admit, MRI is not my, my area of, um, not particularly an area of massive interest to me personally. But um, yeah, it was interesting to see the contrast between many of the areas, the clinical areas there, many of the um, modalities there compared to the MRI, which was seemingly um, a bit more advanced than, than the areas, the other areas in which I was working in. But to talk about the other aspect of my, of my experiences in Tanzania, um, 
I was living in the Work the World house out there. Um, it's a really beautiful um, accommodation and lucky enough to have a, uh, a swimming pool of all things. <laughs> which was quite a bizarre contrast when you spend your day dealing with uh, you know, a lack of resources etc in, in, in a hospital and then you could come home and relax um, around a swimming pool but uh, it was a nice uh, nice inclusion and a, a nice welcome break. The people I was living in the, the house with were fantastic. Um, I had met some fun, I met some really interesting, very people from lots of different professions uh, dentistry, medicine, nursing, lots and lots of nurses, paediatric and adult, um, physios um, and midwives. And it was really good to have opportunities to um, relax with those people. When I'm back in the UK, I'm at a hospital which is based very close to my university, my normal university accommodation. So that allows for me to, um, to go back and forth from placement. So uh, I never really had the experience of living properly with other uh, healthcare professionals before, or student healthcare professionals before. But Dar es Salaam itself was a very colourful, vibrant, interesting city. Like, you could always look around and see that something was going on, always something different. There's very obvious wealth disparity. The area in which I was living whilst I was in Dar es Salaam is quite a wealthy area. There's a lot of accommodation for embassies in that area, a lot of other sort of diplomatic staff, um, Western companies who operate in Tanzania, like their members, their managers will have big houses there. You would go to, say, a more local market and you would see a very different, uh, very um, interesting, but quite somewhat impoverished scene. Um, but I don't know, it's quite easy in these situations to go, oh, well, bless them, they haven't got this. But there was also, as much as there was hardship, there was a lot of... Um, you know excitement and interest in in those places uh, and people were very had a very enterprising spirit um everyone was a businessman you know you would have somebody on the street who would be coming up to you you'd have somebody coming up uh, coming up to you on the street who would be trying to sell you you know their home brew which you would never touch because you would you'd go blind but you know fair on them or they'd be selling um you'd be on a bus and they would be trying to sell you uh food they'd be trying to sell you fizzy pop um, yeah, it was a really interesting um, place. A truly sort of East African experience, I think it would be fair to say. Um, and it's a very vibrant metropolis. I, I actually got, after the four weeks of placement that I did, I actually then did two weeks further um, travelling alongside my girlfriend. So we spent some time in, in Zanzibar and we just got a chance to do a safari. So that's, uh, there is Stone Town in, in Zanzibar, which is an amazing city just full of these very contrasting Arabic and European and African styles. It had a very strong British influence. It was a British protectorate um, in the empire uh, for a very long time though. It was ruled by a, a separate sultan. It had these very sort of winding little streets and it was a very easy place to get lost. And to contrast that then you had, uh, I had a really nice time spending some time on the, the very south of the island. It was almost just a tropical uh, experience. Um, I've never quite seen beaches and scenery like it. Um, I got a very, I had the opportunity whilst I was there to go and swim with wild bottlenose dolphins, um, which was uh, a really, uh, to keep using that, that phrase, unforgettable experience. Just another picture there, just chilling by the fire whilst I was on Zanzibar. And there was animals, uh, lots of animals. Um, I went to Prison Island, which is just off Zanzibar, where they have uh, this collection of giant tortoises, um, which are <laughs> really cool <laughs> and really fun to see because you could like really walk up to them and just like go and uh, get in get involved. Uh, and I did a safari, so uh, there was um, giraffes to practice a little bit of Swahili, twigger, and then of course uh, there was uh, lions, uh, Simba which is uh, where the name in uh, Lion King comes from. And they are powerful uh, creatures there. It was a real thrill to have the chance to get to see them. See them. They're so ferocious but playful and, and uh, beautiful creatures, very majestic. Um, I'm really, really honoured that I got a chance to see them. Um, and I think that pretty much covers my experiences in Tanzania. Please feel free to leave a comment on the video if you have any questions to ask. 
Um, I will be honest, I will be careful to moderate um, the questions a little bit just because, just because of the, the sensitive nature of the topics that I've talked about. But um, to conclude, I would really uh, fully recommend any radiography student who's a member of the society to, um, to take the opportunity to go and work uh, and do an elective placement abroad. It really gives you a, a broader context and understanding of radiology um, in, a developing, in a developing country um, and what you can do without limited resources. Um, for as much as the fact that there was some, some poor things that I saw going on, at the same time there were some really, really strong and powerful um, examples of good patient care um, and things that would be doing right. And, and you can learn a lot by those kind of experiences. Um, and it takes you very much outside of your comfort zone and that's something that I can uh, thoroughly recommend. So thank you very much for listening if you've made it all the way through and um, yeah, thanks.